If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It already says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. So you don't have to be a part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in at Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Fire merch. All right, dear listener. Here we are. Uh, we got a lot of uh, songs for you tonight, but the first one is from a band by the name of Muse. Muse. Oh. The song is... Okay, ready? You guys want to know? Do you really want to know? All right, we'll tell you. Won't stand down, ladies and gentlemen. It is their brand new song. Bye bye, news. Let's go. I never believed that I would concede and let someone trample on me. You strung me along. I thought I was strong, but you were just gaslighting me. I've opened my eyes and counted the lies, and now it is clearer to me. You are just a user and an abuser, living vicariously. I never believed that I would concede and get myself blown asunder. You strung me along, I thought I was strong, but now you have pushed me under. I've opened my eyes and counted the lies, and now it is clearer to me. You are just a user and an abuser, and I refuse to take it.
Wow. You guys should see the official music video. It's that is a ridiculous. strong freaking opening, that DJ is pretty, Nick. Pretty ridiculous. Wow. That, that is, is a strong freaking opening. opening. I'm setting the tone. <laughs> wow. Ah, okay. That shit was heavy. Um, Freaky, too. Yeah, yeah so, so this song is about eyes. people uh, yeah, gaslighting people and all that shit. Oh, is that what it was? He, he literally used Look, babe, look. You didn't see him. He's, he's going. He's like. He's, he's ascending right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, he used the term uh, um, gaslighting in, in the lyrics, lyrics itself. itself. Okay, I'm pulling up the lyrics right now. <sighs> yeah, 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 dear okay, listener. So, I'll, I'll uh, post them here, dear listener, so you can see as well. This is actually a pretty. A, a very, very lyrical, lyrical song, song, actually. Um, so I never believed I would concede and let someone trample on me. You strung me along, and I thought I was strong, but you were just gaslighting me. I've opened my eyes and counted the lies, and now it's clearer to me. You're just a user and abuser, living vicariously. I never believed that I uh, and I never believed that I would concede and get myself blown asunder. You strung me along. I thought I was strong, but now you've pushed me under. I've opened my eyes and counted the lies. Now it's clearer to me. You are just a user and an abuser, and I refuse to take it. Won't stand down. I'm growing stronger. Won't stand down. I'm owned no longer. Won't stand down. You've used me for too long. Now die alone. I'm coming back a counterattack. I'm playing you at your own game. I'm cutting you out a shadow of doubt. It's going to hang yeah, over your name. Philip says there's no echo. Oh, but Nick says we are. We are. He's the boss. <laughs> I just unplugged mine, plugged it back in. Let's see. Oh, wow. <laughs> For the hundredth you know time, epic echo. I think, I think that this is... Wait a minute. Do we figure out the echo? Are we good? Hello? Is there still an echo? We'll, we'll, we'll learn in a second. We'll learn um, in a second. I think this is a really good song. Well, we're we're not God, but I think he meant to say we're good. He said you're God. You're oh. good. Is that echo? <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm playing your. I'm cutting you out. A shadow of doubt is going to hang over your name. I've opened my eyes. I see your disguise. I will never see you the same. Whoa! I know how to win. Before you begin, I'll shoot you. Before you take aim. Now I'm coming back, a counterattack, a psychological war. I'm cutting you in. I'm under your skin. Now I'm going to settle a score. I've opened my eyes. I see your disguise. I will never see you the same. I know how to win. Before you begin, I'll shoot you before you take aim. Um, and he tells him to die alone again. Okay. Whoa. Wow. This is. Yeah. I think that this is a really important song, though, because there are lots of people that will gaslight other people and. Like this, this person got to the point where, like they said, I never believed that I would concede and let someone trample on me. You strung me along. I thought I was strong, but you were just gaslighting me. And that feeling, that's not a good feeling when all of a sudden you realize that somebody's been doing that to you. Because that's the whole thing with gaslighting is you can fall <laughs> for it for a while. And you can think that, especially if you believe that, that you, I'm talking about in a relationship, you know, if you believe that the person that you and the person are the same and that you guys are both going for the same goal that you both want to love each other and respect each other and whatever and then you just assume that the person is making mistakes and that they're not doing it on purpose mm -hmm. but you know like you know you know in the in the past because you you were friends with the person that i was with you know and when when they were saying that they were doing stuff on purpose like that 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 hurt that hurt more because it was like wow like really and that I think it hurt more because I, I fell for it. Like, I, I, be, I didn't believe that the person was doing some of those things on purpose. I just thought that they were just, you know, being making careless mistakes. or making mistakes or, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, not that, that it was intentional. And But you know what? That's the one thing. They, they say, what is it, in war? Never underestimate your opponent. Yeah, the problem is, is that the people who gaslight you are, are generally not your opponents. They're your friends. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, at least from your from your vantage point. And that's what's so insidious uh, mm -hmm. about that concept. And it doesn't really matter what position you're in because you would figure you're in a pretty big band. You're a rock star. You're probably a millionaire. So yeah. you're in this position of power. But 
there are people who um, are really good at manipulation. Yep. And, you know, I call it jujitsu, where you can still control somebody even from a vulnerable situa- so situation because, you know, they will use your strength against you. They'll be like, oh, I guess you're a big rock star. You don't have time for me. You know, st- I, I imagine stuff like that. Or people try to do it. Like, you know, there was this guy who was like, oh, they're supposed to be Christians, but they don't get it because they're charging for songs, blah, 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 I always blah, think blah. that's weird when people say that. It's, and, like, wh- it's people trying to manipulate yeah. you into doing... So I'm supposed to go and, and uh, not earn a living so that you can get a song <laughs> review. We're supposed to not feed our children so you can get a song for yeah, free? Yeah, to prove to you that we're Christians. That we're Christians, <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like... Yep. It, you know, it, yeah, it's, people do it all the time, even in the political realm. If you it, don't vote for Biden, you ain't black. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like, it's like, motherfucker, you're the one going for the job interview. But you know, you, you, you so what I'm saying is, you could still manipulate people from a from a position of weakness. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't yep. it doesn't really matter, you know, where you are and who has the power dynamics in the relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, Anybody who's good at manipulation is going to find a way to get over on you. And it takes a very long time to extricate yourself from a person like that. It takes an extremely long time and it takes a lot of... And a lot of times it takes an outsider telling you, hey, you're getting played here. Yeah. Because when you're in the middle of it, it's... It, you know, I had somebody in my life where I would say, well, so-and-so is this, this, and that, but at least they're honest. I know, Yeah. And it, it took me a very... It took you to tell me, uh, actually, no. Yeah. She's actually pretty deceptive. Yeah. And, you know, obviously we had a situation. Right. Sorry, Nick, but we were supposed to do this a couple days ago, yeah. but we were dealing with a very manipulative, gaslighting, destructive person. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating... And usually... Again, this person's operating from a deficit as well. Like, mm-hmm. if if somebody were to just to look at the dynamics between me, you, and her, they would be like, "Oh, you guys have all the power. You guys have mm-hmm. all the." Yeah, but that person was doing stuff like that from deep. You know, I remember that person talking to me and creating and and making things look a certain way. Like, they didn't use many words to be very, very deceptive. Say that again. This, that person did not use very many words to be extremely deceptive. Right. They were very, very choosy with the words that they said and the words that they didn't say and allowed things to look a certain way. Like, just gave just enough information to kind of, like, steer you in a direction and then just let you loose on your own imagination. Yeah. And they, like, the... But they're that they're a very smart person. Like when you sit down and you read any of their writings and stuff, you it's like, whoa, wait a minute. Wow. Highly intelligent. Extremely, Hi- yeah. Highly intelligent, but yeah. knows how to operate um at a deficit. They know how to operate yeah. you know, from from that. And yeah. so I never believed that I would concede to get myself blown asunder. I mean you know, it's one of those things where it's like it's very hard to tell people be on guard for that because you don't want to create right this cynical yeah exactly type of thing where you can't trust your friends and things of that yep. nature um yep. and it's it's one of those things where you really you know i think now i'm a lot more i've all but but that's always been a big complaint about me people like yo we could be around you for years and never really know you mm mm-hmm. mhm you know, people say that all the time. And a lot of that is because I moved around so much. But a lot of that is, is that I generally don't trust people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I generally don't trust people with, you know, what do you, insider information. So right. by default. Right. But, but I've seen it so many times. And it's not like stuff that's happened to me. I'm just saying, you know, I'm an observer of people. Mm-hmm. And so... I just default to not trusting people and default to, you know, putting out certain aspects of, of things. And, yeah. You know, because. Yeah. I, I think it. Th- the more that I see, the more I see the utility and the wisdom in that, you know, I'm in a, you know, I'm in a particular situation where somebody that I should be able to trust mo- almost completely. You know what I mean? Like that person. 
I've found out so much stuff about the person that now I, I feel like the person's a stranger. And then you start replaying, you know, you start replaying conversations that you had and and things like if you if you ex if you expect that something is a certain way and you want to believe that it is, then you will see that it is. But if you're open to seeing what is the actual truth in a situation, then you will see things differently. Um, but you know, I had certain assumptions and I wanted things to be a certain way. And of course now, now that I'm having to face the facts, it's, it's weird. It weird is not even the right word for it. It's, it's really sad. And it's, and you feel, you can feel kind of like lost, especially if it's somebody that was like a staple point in your life. Then you're like, this person was like a, a, a place of stability for you. And now you're questioning everything, which, you know, just because somebody does something wrong doesn't mean they did everything wrong. Um, and, and I think that that takes some time to kind of wade through what what it is. But, you know, there were there were s smaller things that like I don't want to say too much. There were smaller things that I thought, wow, why, why didn't the person do this, that, or the other thing in when this situation happened? And then you end up finding out like much more big, bigger, sinister things. And you're like, okay, no wonder, you know, they were chopping off people's arms. They didn't care when I broke my uh, finger. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that didn't mean anything. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. And not to make excuses for people like that, but a lot of times that kind of you know, manipulative, manipulative, duplicitous behavior is, it's how, it's all they know. Mm -hmm. It's all they came up in. So it's, yep. it's normalized to them. Yep. And, you know, they don't, they, they, they don't really understand why you would react and say, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. They don't, they don't get that. They don't yeah. understand yeah. And I, I think that that's something that's, you know, got to be acknowledged. Like, I don't make excuses, you know, I don't make excuses for anybody. But one of the things that I, that I you know, as I've learned is a lot of times I'm just trying to understand people, not so much, you know, judge people. In the sense of, yeah, like, I'll judge, like, is this a, is this a person that's, you know, you know, advantageous to invest time in or whatever and that's obviously a judgment but i'm just talking about morally i'm like man everybody's fucked so yeah yeah you know i just want to understand why are they like that why would you do that you know and and the more you understand people the better you understand yourself and the more you understand yourself the better you understand people so i'm just in a space where i'm like because you know you and i had a draw it was a last week mm. around this time i think it was it's mm. friday and we we're just driving around and you're explaining all this shit to me. And I'm like, I wasn't blown away because I had already observed so many things with, with those people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I wasn't blown away, but I was just like, damn, like this is how far that type of shit goes. You know yeah. what I mean? Yep. Yep. So, but, you know, this guy, this guy figured it out. Yep. <laughs> and he's not, <laughs> he's not going to be in that situation again. Yeah. You know, the one thing that's really dangerous about situations like this, that like kind of what he's going over here, is that once once something happens to you, especially if it was, you know, seemingly unexpected because you didn't really see it coming, it can make you jaded toward every other situation after that. So, right. you know, like, and, and I'm still trying to work through through that in my in my own life in a practical sense. Like, you know, there there are things that happened in my previous relationship that would never happen in this relationship. It just never would. But the mind has almost like a mind of its own, you know, like there are certain things that fears or anxieties or whatever that can pop up that are, that are completely unfounded and they don't have any basis in reality. But because something happened to you in the past, then you assume that that behavior is going to be repeated. Um, especially if before the signs were there, but you didn't look at them. So then they were almost not there. So, you know, you, you wonder, am I doing the same thing again? Like, am I, you know, whatever. And, and then you can, I think that you can ruin actual good relationships because you're, you know, he said, um, won't stand down. I'm growing stronger. Um, you used me, you used me for too long. I'll die alone. Like there's this, you're just a user and abuser li living vicariously. 
it's now clearer to me like this sort of definitive like understanding of what the situation was it can it can make you say this will never like I, that person they're they're going to get what's coming to them because that's uh, that's over they're not going to do that anymore but then you can overcompensate in every other relationship after that and and you can end up causing yourself a lot of heartache because you you know you don't want something repeated that isn't something that would have happened in the first place in the next relationship. Yeah, that's why that line is dangerous. Which one? I know how to win before you begin. I'll shoot you before you take aim. Right, right. Like. Right. I understand for that specific person. Mm-hmm. But sometimes if you if you, if you you take that mentality to its, to its extreme version of it. Yep. You can end up being an abusive person yourself. By going after people, you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying, who really don't have those kinds of intentions, but Mm -hmm. you're so hurt. And a lot of it is like wounded pride, like, oh, I can't believe I I, I would let somebody do that to me. Well, yeah, I mean, he said it at the beginning. I thought I was strong, but you were just getting, you know, so that I thought I was strong and then this happened. You know what I mean? But you gaslighted me. Right. Um, Yeah. Right. And, And the thing is, is like people don't understand, like you can only take advantage of strong people. What? You can only take advantage of strong people. So, for example, for example, if somebody takes advantage of you financially, mm-hmm. you can only do that with somebody who has money. Yeah. You see yeah. what I'm saying? If a person says, I have to carry you all over the place, I'm tired of carrying you, you're only able to do that because you're strong enough to carry them. So, a lot of times that people feel taken advantage of, they feel like they're weak, but in reality, people look for strong people to take advantage of. And what happens is, is is that they're playing to the strength of that person and saying, hey, you've got enough money or you've got enough fame or you have enough emotional resources or you have enough physical resources or you have enough whatever, whatever to, to do this extra thing for me. And they keep taking, taking, taking. And after a while, you find yourself being taken advantage of. But it doesn't mean you're weak. It means that there's a uh, there's a strength that you have that they felt that they could exploit. Mm-hmm. So. That's why I said, like, a lot of it is, like, taking away, trying to take away the judgment aspect of it. Because when you have that judgment aspect of it, you judge the person that did it to you. And you judge yourself for allowing it to be done to you. Mm -hmm. And if you take the judgment aspect away from it and you you look at it from just trying to understand them and yourself, then you get to see a clearer picture. Like, no, it wasn't that I was weak. It was that I was strong. And I was... And you have to have a certain standard of moral goodness to even be a nobody thinks they can take advantage of donald trump (laughs) you see what i'm saying like nobody believes that they could financially tell a sob story and take advantage of donald trump you see what i'm saying because of because of our moral assumptions about him (laughs) you see what i'm saying yeah that's an interesting point yeah so like you have to be a certain kind of strong and a certain type of good person or perceived to be such in order to get taken advantage of in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Um, but because we don't, we don't, we don't under, 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 we're so busy looking to judge the person who did it and then ostensibly judging ourselves, we don't see the, the big picture about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> that's that's the difference, I think, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, really, really good song. Love uh, the this riffage. This was a 9.8 for me. I really liked it. It was heavy. I liked the music video. Um, uh, actually, 9.9. 9.9. Well, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was a good song lyrically, uh, sonically. Yeah. Um, it was kind of, um, kind of a little bit predictable, but it was still a good song. To jam to. So it's an 8.8 for me. 8.8 and a 9.9. But it was a very strong, it was a very strong opening. Holy smokes. Yeah. Very, very strong opening by the band Muse. Muse. Check right. it out, losers. Listen, we got a, this is a, we a mega stream, right? Yep. Put a mega, stream mega, mega stream. This is a mega stream, so sit where you are. DJ Nick gives it a 9.5. So there you are. Um... We're coming right back with another jam. If you're in regular YouTube world, sorry. We're going to have to check you on the other side of 3 p.m. or 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Vin out. Sorry out. Gone.